Several people have asked me over these past few weeks if they are going to hell. I consider eternity an extremely serious subject and this is something that I personally have wrestled with for over a year now. Um, the whole topic in general of what does it, I guess, take to get to heaven or how does, you know, like, well, if I have this or that issue in my life, will this disqualify me from making it to heaven? So that's what I want to talk about. I have notes with me because there is a lot of scripture that pertains to this that I know like offhand in my mind, but I don't know exactly where the verses are per se. Like I have them memorized, but not like exactly where in the Bible. So I had to write down um, a lot of this to help organize my thoughts. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is I think generally when people think about uh, how somebody is saved or who goes to heaven and who goes to hell, most people I would say in my experience are under this impression of like kind of like good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell and um, while it sounds uh, on the surface like that would be the answer it's completely unscriptural and I am going to explain why so first of all while not all of us believe the Bible we can all agree on the fact that uh, even though everybody does good things everybody also does bad things and if you're looking at this from a biblical perspective everybody sins and in let's see here um that also includes like our heart motives too like on our thoughts not just what we do externally but uh evil and good are also states of mind because your actions reflect what's going on inside of you what it is you're thinking about like for somebody to go out and rob a bank they usually premeditated that it's usually something that's going on on the inside that's wrong so uh, you know, and God is greater than all of us, you know, so only he is good, really truly in that aspect, because he's the only one that has never done anything wrong. And there's a lot of people that would disagree with that because of the condition that the world's in. But I would say to them that the condition of the world is because of sin, which is going against God. So in Luke 18, it says that a certain ruler came to Jesus asking how he could obtain eternal life. And Jesus responded to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone, okay? And I think that while Jesus was saying that, he was also making the point um, kind of subtly that he is God. Like he was kind of making the point like, cause the guy came to him and said, good teacher. And Jesus was like saying, well, no man is good, you know? And Jesus, you know, if you believe what the Bible says, he was not only a man, but he was God incarnate. So, you know, while it is true that all of us will do good things in our lifetimes, as I mentioned earlier, it's also true that we will all do bad things, even if we're good people, so to speak. Um, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And uh, like I was saying, in, in a human perspective, um, you know, even apart from the Bible, we can see that everybody does things wrong. Everybody, you know, messes up. Nobody's perfect. And uh, also as people, we tend to see some things as being more guilty than other things because we see some wrongdoing as worse than um, others. And that while that is true in one sense, it's also true that uh, in God, there is no evil at all. There's nothing evil in God. So while we may not have done something that we think is as evil as like murdering or raping somebody, it still comes down to the common fact that to do anything wrong at all, we have to have evil motives in our hearts. Uh, this is why I believe Jesus says in Matthew 5, you have heard it said, you shall not murder, and that anyone who does will be subject to judgment. But I say to you that anyone who is angry at a brother or sister without cause is subject to judgment. And then he also goes on to say that, you know, you've heard it said not to commit adultery, but I say to you that anybody who even looks at somebody with lust has already committed adultery in the heart, okay? So this is a heart issue. Everything that we do, whether good or bad, begins in the heart. Um, Matthew 15, 19 says, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. 
so in scripture we see that a sin is a heart issue and as I was saying like also even outside of scripture uh, just basic common sense you know when somebody does something you know that it's coming from something inside of them so in essence our actions tend to often be an outward reflection of our inner person or our hearts so I believe that God is not nearly as concerned about what it is we do externally as it is why we're doing it okay so this can even apply with good things like for example if you have a celebrity that donates you know thousands of dollars to charity uh, that's a good thing but it's an even better thing if they're doing it with a genuine desire to help people if they're doing it because they're genuinely compassionate and not just to be seen by other people or to gain more popularity because there's a motive behind everything that people do and the thing with motives is while we may be able to fool other people as to the reasons behind why we do what we do God sees everything in our thoughts and our hearts that's private with us among other people but not with God who is all-knowing and sees everything like nothing's hidden from him so scripture is also clear in James 2 10 that if we've broken even one part of God's law pertaining to what is good that we're guilty of breaking the entire thing and uh, Jesus said in Matthew this kind of explains that in, in Matthew 22 chapter 22 verses 36 through 40 that the greatest commandments are to love God with everything we are and to love other people as ourselves to love our neighbors as ourselves and then he stated that all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments okay and no matter how loving we are or how good we think we are none of us does that perfectly all of the time it is literally impossible as just human people who are imperfect who are flawed to get it right 100% of the time every one of us fails in that area we all hurt people even people that we love so um, we're not even capable of reaching this standard of perfection on our own so what if you're trying like you might make the argument well what if my good deeds you know more so outweigh my bad deeds you know well first of all it's impossible to really count every single thought motive and intention that you have good and bad and line them up together and make sure they equal out I mean you might have a heart that you know is tended toward good but I mean there's even a quote that says the road to hell is often paved with good intentions sometimes what we think is good or right isn't even right so that's a whole other issue in of itself but you know so while God does care very much about the good things that we do scripture is repeatedly and abundantly clear that it is not the basis on how we are saved Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 9 says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by works so that no one may boast and that you can find that salvation being described as a free gift of God and in saying that we could not earn it throughout scripture multiple times it's in Galatians it's in uh it's in Romans, I believe. It's, I mean, it's in multiple books. Like, I'd have to go back and look again to see exactly which books all together. But, I mean, it's in there over and over again. So, in other words, you know, we could never do enough good deeds in our finite lifetimes to measure up to the standard of God's goodness and holiness. Um, so, when it comes to, like, on Judgment Day, if you were to try to appeal to God with your works... It's never gonna cut it it's never gonna cut it so let's like use an example if you were going before just a regular judge like on the earth okay and you let's say you broke into somebody's home or you stole a stereo sound system from the store or something right and you go to court and the judge is like you know he's got proof that you have committed this crime and you make the appeal and you're like but you know that's true I did that but what about all these other great things I did in my life you know like last week I just went and visited people in the hospital or you know I I just helped my neighbor move like it doesn't matter at that point the the a just judge is going to punish crime if you are guilty of crime because that's what they do that's what's right that's what's fair people need to be held accountable for their actions it's the same with God 
so God very much cares about the good things that we do, but when it comes down to it, we're still guilty. All of us still have done things that are wrong and that needs to be dealt with. And there are two ways to deal with that. And that would be that you either have a heart that intends to do better, which would be repentance and turning toward God, or essentially you reject him and you live for yourself and then try to appeal on judgment day with your works, which is never going to get it because you still have, you're still guilty of things that you should have never done. And a judge that is truly fair, that is truly good, that is truly right, is not going to let crime and evil and all of that just slide by. Okay, so a truly just judge who is really doing their job is going to penalize crime. So then we have a dilemma. So if we've established that we're not saved by our good deeds or our good actions or our good intentions or anything like that. Oh, that's another thing. Scripture also says that man's righteousness is like filthy rags before God. And like I said, that goes back to because no matter how many good things we've done in our lifetimes, ultimately we still will never do enough that's going to meet perfection because we're people and we make up, you know, we make mistakes. So, so how are we saved then if not by our works? Everybody has heard that there is one way, okay? And that was the entire purpose of Jesus Christ. So he came to earth. You, everybody's heard Jesus has died for your sins. That's because even after we accept Christ, first of all, there's got to be forgiveness for all the crap in our lives before we accept Christ, you know? But even after we do, we're still not going to be perfect. We will become more and more like him when we receive the Holy Spirit there's a transformation, a heart change. Like I said, it goes back to the heart. So little by little, we, we will become better. We will improve. We will become more good, so to speak. But you're still going to mess up sometimes. You're still going to make mistakes because you're still not a perfect person. And that was the entire purpose of Christ coming to the cross because he's the only being, the only human being that was ever without sin, that was only flawless. And the reason for that is because he was literally God himself incarnate in the flesh. So it says in the Bible, I don't remember the verse right now on, I didn't wanna take all the time to look it up and write it all down, but you can Google it and easily find it. It says that there is one name under heaven by which men may be saved, okay? That is the free gift, that is salvation, it's Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except by me because nobody can be truly pure without him, okay? So it's like when you receive Christ, God no longer looks at all of your mistakes. He sees his son in your place. So then when you get to judgment day, you have the only appeal that will matter, and that is that you are in relationship with Jesus Christ. You have accepted that free gift of salvation. You, you believe in what he has done for you. You know that you are a sinner that is in need of him, and your intentions are to please God and to, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love God with everything you are. You know, you'll fall short of that, but, you know, now, now you now you care now life's not just about you and so you know sometimes people will say but that's why is there only one way that's so like non-inclusive you know but when you really think about it and this just came to me the other day when I was thinking about it the only other way would literally be by your works like all the other religions I guess you could say and I don't believe Jesus is a religion so when I say that I'm just saying that because a lot of people who aren't uh, born again they just view Jesus as a religion you know but what makes the Bible different from a lot of other, um, I guess you could say texts or doctrine is that all these other, uh, this ideology of ma is, is man reaching God, like cleaning themselves up and it does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. There has to be a heart change because this is what matters is what's in here. And you can go to church, you can um, give offerings, you can light candles and pray to your statue, you know what I'm saying? Like, and whatever it is, but ultimately what God cares about is what is in here. He's looking for people that love him and that love other people. And so, you know, the only other way would be by your works. And that doesn't even make sense because first of all, everybody's still going to be imperfect. Like no matter what they believe, they're still going to you know, so your works can't really save you. And 
without and, and that doesn't just apply to eternity like salvation is also like a way of living on the earth you know so you can have all the best intentions in the world on what kind of person you're going to be and still fail at that every day like if you struggle with lust you know you might be like oh i really want to stop watching porn you know i really want to i really want to stop like having you know all these thoughts these these odd sexual thoughts about other people all the time and you can do that but in your own strength a lot of times you can't like that's that's why we have addictions like so um, I believe that's part of why the Bible says that you are set free from the power of sin is because with the Holy Spirit indwelling in you now you're not just trying to do that on your own you have a living power on the inside of you that enables you to walk out what is good and the Bible says who the Son sets free is free indeed not only free from uh, you know hell but free from all the crap in this life that that messes us up you know and that doesn't mean that we're never gonna make mistakes that we're that we're gonna be perfect on this side of things but you know it's gonna be it's it's gonna it's gonna be a lot easier when you have God in you because now you're not just living with yourself now you have a heart change and you have convictions that you didn't have before and uh, I forgot what else I was gonna say but another thing is like you know I hear people say the craziest things like they'll be like uh, they think because they watch certain movies or because they do this or that that they're going to hell and like You know, I'm not saying every bit of entertainment is something that you should um, Consume but like it's so senseless to think that God It's not about that. It's about having a relationship with God and he'll take care of the things in your life that shouldn't be there and it says that his grace is sufficient for us so when we do mess up you know we're not going to go when you have God living inside of you you don't have the desire to go out and purposely do wrong all of the time it's not like you're like oh this is a get out of jail free card I can just sin all I want it doesn't work that way because God changes your heart but when you do sin when there are things that you struggle with it says that God's grace is sufficient for you so those mistakes are covered so with receiving God there is a love and a peace and an understanding that is so powerful that it changes your desires it changes the way you see things and that's a whole other video for a whole other time but it is truly an amazing experience and I'm not saying it's always easy because it's not especially when you first start um, when you first uh, I guess start trying to walk in the spirit instead of um, in the flesh that you've always lived in but it does get easier over time you know and you have God walking through it with you and it always does like even when it's hard on your flesh it always does lead to the the most joy the most satisfaction the most peace and that's really what everybody's looking for is just that fulfillment that that um, contentment you know because happiness isn't based on circumstances there's circumstances that can make us happy for a time but they can't ultimately fulfill us and everything in life is temporary temporary because it ends at death you know but um, the one thing that is unchanging the one thing that is um, that that you can never lose so to speak in, unless you willfully just decide that you don't want him is God so in summary the short answer to this video is if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you are not going to hell but that is the only way the only way to spend eternity with God is to accept God into your life here because if you want nothing to do with God now why would you spend eternity with him and I want to say and not every Christian believes this but I believe based on scripture and I'll make a video on this too sometime in the future that God wants everyone to be with him it says in the Bible that all things were created by him for him it says that hell was created it wasn't even created for mankind it was made for the devil and his angels so the only reason that people end up in hell is because they reject their they reject salvation they reject God's free gift for them they reject his love and you know so the only reason anybody will go to hell is because they don't want to be with God and that's what hell is is the separation from God and we tend to think of hell as like just a big burning fire pit with all kinds of like screaming dead souls you know and maybe that is part of what it looks like I really don't know what the exact dynamics of hell is but I do believe like we focus on the physical 
torture of what it would be but I think that and I know this in my heart that the ultimate torture of hell and it makes me weep a lot when I think about it is that it will be the complete and total and utter separation from God and everything good everything good that we know comes from God so this is the absence of anything good and that is not a fate that God desires for anybody because he's a good God so I believe that anybody who teaches anything against that is going against what scripture says about God and his character and that they're deceived I'm not saying they're not born again but um, God doesn't will for human beings to be in hell it says that his heart is that all come to repentance that all come to know him and be saved and everybody has that choice it says I set before you life and death choose life so in essence the only way to be saved is to have relationship with Jesus don't worry about cleaning yourself up you come to him as you are then the Holy Spirit will work with you and change you from the inside out and you're not saved by those by that you're I mean you're saved by the Holy Spirit coming you know to live in your heart but you're not saved by the good works that follow that so the mistakes you make aren't going to take him away. They're not going to send you to hell. Um, so it's not about what you do or don't do. It's about who you have. Okay. And if you have Jesus, you, you're not going to go to hell. So you do not have to be afraid with you. We don't have to be afraid of hell because it's been defeated. Like that entire issue, it is an issue, but that entire issue is defeated in Christ. So I hope this helps somebody today. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to message me. I love you guys. Um, I'm praying for all of you. I want everybody that I know to be saved, and I believe God wants the same thing. So thank you for listening to me.